This week's Four Questions Journalist Spotlight is brought to you by Lefts Atlanta Media, Atlanta's best journalist database. Subscribe at leftsatlantamedia.com. Welcome to another edition of our Four Questions Journalist Spotlight. We've got a great crew today. We are talking with the team from WABE's City Lights, hosted by Lois Reitzis. Uh, we've got well, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves so, and, and, and their role. So, um, Lois, uh, I'll let you go first. Okay. Uh, the four questions immediately made me think of a Passover Seder. <laughs> and <laughs> so why is this podcast different from all others, Mitch? Because on, uh, when this podcast, we eat unleavened bread while we're, while we're doing the podcast. <laughs> and I have a chair that allows me to recline. There, there we go. you uh, go. There we go. Obviously, I, I, I have for many years was the one who asked the four questions. So. Oh, <laughs> all right. You. Kim. All... Yeah. Oh, I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go around the horn and let everybody just introduce themselves real quick and their and their role with the show. Okay, I'm Lois Reitzis. I am the host of City Lights and the executive producer. All right, Kim. I am Kim Drobes, and I am the senior producer of City Lights. Okay, and Summer. I'm Summer Evans. I'm the producer for City Lights. Excellent. So now we know who everybody is. Excellent. Uh, so, Lois, give give me a little background about what is City Lights, and I'm going to let you say what it is, and then I'm going to let Summer say what it is not. How about that? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> City Lights was born in January of 2015, and it is WABE's arts and culture show. I like to think of it in comparison to Fresh Air. I'd like to think of it as Atlanta's Fresh Air. Um, I would say it's not political. <laughs> it's not uh, necessarily hard-hitting news. Um, we don't really cover breaking stories as more of evergreen pieces, but we do cover up and coming events or exhibitions that are currently on view or author conversations that are going to be happening at local bookstores, that sort of thing. Kim, is there anything you would say that makes City Lights different from any other show that covers this topic around town? You know, we we pretty much own this topic around town. There's really no other long running arts and culture daily program in Atlanta. So we are incredibly honored to have this platform and we use it to the best of our ability. Okay. All right. So let's let's do kind of a little kind of around the horn of kind of your kind of what what brought you to where you are, a little bit of a career let's let's call it the career background uh 15 seconds. And uh, Summer, I'm going to start with you. Um, mine is probably the shortest. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, I graduated from Georgia State with a journalism degree. Um, I actually started as a production assistant at Georgia Public Broadcasting on the TV side, um, but knew I wanted to work my way into journalism in some capacity. And so when an opportunity came up to be a producer for On Second Thought at GPB, um, I jumped right on it and I worked there uh, under Virginia Prescott, who was the host at the time. And then in September of 2018, um, an interim position as producer for City Lights opened up, um, which then became permanent in November. And I've been here for almost four years now. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> My first big girl job. <laughs> All right, Kim. I, I also went to Georgia State a little bit earlier than Summer did. While I was there, I worked for Album 88 and produced and hosted the Georgia Music Show. After college, my first gig in the industry was as an overnight board op for WSB AM. And from there, I landed on the Clark Howard Show, and I produced his show for 22 years. He retired from his uh, daily radio show about... Oh, gosh, I guess it's about a year and a half, two years ago now. And I ended up with the best job in the world and landed with Lois Reitzes. This is like the happiest version of me that's ever existed. <laughs> oh, how lucky am I? How lucky there's, am I? Come on. There, you know, it's funny. There, there's there's a couple of jobs around town that I that I look at. I'm like, man, that's a fun job. And and, and your show, obviously, is like, is like, I mean, what a fun, what a fun opportunity to talk with fun people every day the other the other one is is paul milliken over at channel five who gets to do these kind of 
Rogue Warrior fun feature stories every morning from different fun places. I always look at that and go, man, I'd like to have Paul's job. That's fun. Okay, so so Lois, so let me let, I'll let you talk about your how you got to where you are. I got into radio because I was an insomniac. <laughs> And I used to love listening overnight because it was so much more interesting than trying to fall asleep when I was a teenager. But I was listening to um, mostly the overnight service of the classical station in Chicago because um, my background is in music. And... Uh, I just thought it would be so much fun to share a love of music with a radio audience that when I was in graduate school, my first week, um, there was, there still is, an NPR affiliate on the campus of Indiana University in Bloomington. And I just went in and said, need anyone? <laughs> and That's the way to I, do it. I, yeah. I, they said no, but um, we always take auditions. And I auditioned, and I walked out with a job. And that was my start in radio. Um, that was for about two years. And then um, we moved to Atlanta. And about a year and a half after that, I was hired at WABE in 1979. The station was mainly classical with NPR News, which at that time was all things considered. And Morning Edition had just begun the same month I started here. So for 35 years, I hosted classical on WABE and then when the format changed. I got to host this wonderful arts and culture program, and I still host Classical on the HD channel on our stream. That's right. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because, yeah, ab absolutely. It's still the, still the Classical opportunity. Uh, so I should, I should ask, and just for our listeners and viewers, uh, what time is the show on? How many times? How many times a week? Which days? All that kind of thing. City Lights is on air daily from 11 a.m. to noon, Monday through Friday, and it repeats from 9 to 10 p.m. <clears throat> okay, good. And, and of course, and you can find the show on, on the website in an on-demand version as well. Is that correct? Right. We're on air 90.1 and at wabe.org. Anytime you want, anywhere in the universe. <laughs> on on your computer, on your mobile device, on your on your Kindle, wherever you want to find it, right? You 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 got it. <laughs> I usually I usually I listen in, on my on my phone in the gym in the mornings and uh, and on the on the computer in my office and later in the morning. So I go from from device to device and the audio seems to work. It follows me wherever wherever I want to go, right? So isn't Funny. technology wonderful? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. So how would you, and uh, I'm going to let uh, Kim or, or Summer kind of answer this question. How do, you, how do you define what the show likes to cover? Summer, I'll let you take that one if you're comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, so as Lois mentioned, we're an arts and culture show, and that can be pretty broad. Um, when it comes to the art side of things, it can be anything from an exhibition to an author conversation to a music event. But also we've expanded into the culture side of it. So food culture, like covering things on Buford Highway or a new restaurant that's opening. Um, we've even gone to uh, or we've covered different parks around Georgia that are just really unique. Um, Kim, I'm drawing a blank at that one park that had a lot of art related to it, and it was built in the 1970s. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I think you're talking about the sculpture garden at Piedmont Park that we're working on, perhaps? That one, but there's one in a rural area, and I am drawing a blank. But, uh, oh, Columbus. Pa pa Passaquan. 
want. Yes. <laughs> so that would be more of a culture thing, but there's a lot of arts related to that. Um, looking at the history of certain things can certainly be culture. Like we've done a Martin Luther King Jr. walk. If you want to do a self-guided tour, that sort of thing. You have, there's there's a park called Constitution Park and there's a little section, I think it's called Doll's Doll, Head Trail. Doll's Head Trail. You, have you ever been down there? Yeah, that's my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's 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 fascinating. There's it's like all these old dolls and toys that people have kind of and there's they put them all on the trail and there's little signs along there. It's it's a little bit uh, Stephen King and a little bit kind of fun <laughs> and fascinating too, right? Yes, <laughs> good description. <Yeah. laughs> uh, okay, so you know, if folks want to be part of the part of the magic, as we like to say, what's the best way to? get in touch and, and and who should they contact as opposed to inundating all three of you with the same, Hey, I want to be on your show message. Um, well, they can send me an email. Um, we all talk about it every week in our pitch meetings. Um, but if they want to send me an email, they can at s evans at wabe.org. And how far in advance are you guys producing or, or and booking the show? Just so folks, because you know, you always get, I was having this conversation with somebody recently. It's like, you know, don't, don't call somebody on a Tuesday and say, hey, I've got an event tomorrow that I want you to put on your show, right? Um, Kim, would you have a recommendation how far in advance people should send it? I would say as far in advance as you can. There's yep. no harm in sending it early. And the worst thing is getting a killer pitch and not having the time to get it on air before the event. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, early bird gets the worm here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I, was, I always tell my clients, I'd rather call a an editor and have them say, you know, I really haven't even thought about October yet, as opposed to them saying, wow, I wish I'd known about this two weeks ago. It definitely would have, would have been my cover story and that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what are some topics that you're looking at or issues or things happening in, in Atlanta that you that you want to focus on kind of it, moving in, into the over the next couple of months? I'm going to I'm going to throw that to Lois. Well, it, we look at, at a wide range of topics. I mean, what we consider culture is broad. And um, Summer and Kim touched upon some of that reach. I love comedy. And um, we really enjoy covering comics and hearing about stand-up that's going on improv around town. We've also um, expanded our reach to include more food and and drinks now. Um, we had a wonderful conversation recently with the guys who opened um, by weight and measure. And uh, this, th these were the owners originally of Joystick, of Joystick Bar. <clears throat> right. Okay. Yeah. The, the, and we also spoke with um, the Distillery of Modern Art, with the owner of the Distillery of Modern Art in Chambly, a guy who is a whiskey enthusiast. And also happens to love art and featuring visual art in his space. And this intersection of drink, entertainment, and creativity is, is really wonderful to behold. And it's really a privilege to be able to talk with the people who are coming up with these things who don't consider um, cocktails necessarily should be limited to people who drink alcohol, but who spend a lot of time um, curating their bitters and freeze drying their strawberries and whatnot. Right. So food, drink, um, comedy. And um, I think the the sense of community that comes from 
pride in one's neighborhoods. Summer mentioned the MLK walk, neighborhood walks, um, the vitality that we're seeing in urban farming and, and what that means for food insecurity or just better living with people being made aware of how to grow their own food in their backyards, which may have pavement. Right, right. This this is great. I, I think people have a, a perception of what you guys like to cover. And this, this for me, definitely, and for the listeners, I think it's going to really broaden their under their their scope of kind of what the what they should be thinking about for the show in terms of stories and and obviously you know i always tell folks listen to the show you get to listen to the show not just once but listen for a week or two and you'll get a better feel for it and look at the website the website's a good way to kind of quickly scan and kind of see okay here's the kind of stories they've been doing the last couple of months this has been such a great episode we're going to split it into two let's look for part two of this conversation next week